Hello everyone, this is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, a quality consulting firm here in Connecticut, and also the present interrupter of the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee on April 17th, 2024. I went down there um, to assist Mr. Sam Salipour uh, in the factor that he is uh, telling his side of the story for Boeing about being a whistleblower on the 777 and Boeing 787. I have many documents dating back many years concerning the 777, 787, 757, 737, their quality issues. I've been involved with quality for over 40 plus years, quality of manufacturing, aerospace, medical implants, materials, printing, and plastic distribution, where we dealt with every uh, known industry. Today, it saddens me, but I have to tell you the truth. But as Thomas Paine said, when speaking the truth, it is many times like administering medication to the dead. I got up at this meeting holding two pieces of paperwork where there is a ton of more. But people asked, they said, Daryl, we look at your face and uh, what's going on there? Well, when I heard the DOD, DOJ, DHS was part and parcel of this mess, I know the history, and now I'm going to tell you the history. This video today, and we have a very special guest. Richard, thank you for coming. I appreciate you coming here. Uh, attention, Senator Blumenthal. Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee is tainted, and quality expert Daryl Guberman proves and explains. Yes, it's tainted, and I don't make this up. This is all factual, corroborated, and you will see right now. Concerning Boeing, concerning all of this mess. The American National Standards Institute is a private, not-for-profit, non-governmental corporation that has both federal agencies and corporations on board. I'm not going to go into the whole detail, the whole litany. There's a long process. You'll find all the data down below in the description. You will find it. In 2015, a Mr. Randy Dory, who was the vice president of ANAB, the chairman and principal on the International Accreditation Forums Board, which is a repository for both national and international accreditation bodies, and whose sister organization, the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation in Australia, where ANSI and ANAB are underwriters for those two organizations. That means any systematic or failures in product are on them, along with uh, Boeing should also get them involved, and the lawyers who are suing Boeing should also get ANSI ANAB involved. We have all data. He handed over the leadership of the IF, incorporated in Delaware, mind you, to a communist Chinese national, Zhao Jinwu. He is also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services, which certified the suspect lab in Wuhan, China. Uh, and the, he is also mandated by his country of origin, Communist China, to take our data through the China National Intelligence Law, Article Number 7. 2018, by the way, he's been involved with our quality since 1994. 2018, ANSI takes over ANAP, okay, uh, totally. You have uh, federal agencies and corporations. This is only a sample. You have ANAP sitting on ANSI's board and vice versa. In 2018, as I said, you have ANSI watching over ANAB, actually taking control of it, and you also have them sitting on the IAF, International Accreditation Forum, and you will find out that ANSI formulated and formed the IAF. They were the uh, designer, developer, and instrumental in getting it onto the marketplace, the International Accreditation Forum, or as we finally call it, it always fails along with ILAC, is laboratory accreditation credible? So they sat on ANSI ANAB's board while Communist China was watching over while you have federal agencies being members of ANSI ANAB and they've gotten their data taken. You have over 10 different registrars in uh, China that can issue an ANSI ANAB accreditation. Here's the actual verification that states that uh, ANSI is the founding member of IAF 
and an ANAB affiliate. Anzi and ANAB, don't let you kid, kid you. They've always been together, Anzi and ANAB. Uh, different acronyms, different, different letters, but it's the same song and dance. As I told you, the IF and ILAC are underwriters. Uh, actually, are not underwriters, but they're sister organizations. ANSI and ANAP are underwriters. Now, this is where it gets sticky. China had control over ANSI and ANAP in 2015 to 21. Who sits on the board over there of ANSI? No other than the Department of Homeland Security, who runs the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. So Richard Blumenthal came up to me after, the, uh, after this inquisition of Sam Salipar, and he was confessing about the issues with Boeing, very ni nicely done, along with um, Ed Pearson and some others. And um, I I'm just <laughs> going to say this. He came over, made a beeline. He said, Daryl, hand over your information to my staff here. So I handed over to a gentleman, his name was Lorenzo. I'm not gonna, Lorenzo, I'm not gonna tell you his last name. But I didn't hand over everything because handing over your information to the Department of Homeland Security is like handing it over to the CCP. You see it for yourself. Some of you are gonna say, well, Daryl, it was over in 2021. The damage has been done. Don't you understand that between 2015 and 2021, six years of Chinese infiltration actually destroying the integrity of our government, our way of life. And you'll have Christopher Ray of the FBI who states on many depositions, and here they sit on there too, we must maintain vigilance over China, yet his agency sits between 2015 and 21, and they still sit as a member on ANSI. And as I've showed you, uh, that ANSI, ANAP, sat on the IAF between... 2015 and 21. So what is going on here? So on top of it, ANSI was paying this guy, Phil Matheson, from the Department of Homeland Security over $262,000 tax-free. It used to be a royalty payment. We're going to get to that very shortly. So yes, the Department of Homeland Security was compromised by being a member of ANSI and ANSI and ANAP sitting on the IAF. You, we also have NIST the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is run by the Department of Commerce. And as you can see, they sit on ANSI as well. And they're getting financially compensated through Gordon Gillerman. Isn't that a tender moment? This is what a royalty payment is. I'm not gonna go in and read it, but please stop the video and you can read it yourself. And here goes a bad one. Where's Richard? Richard, did you leave? No. This is the sadness that I told Richard's aides, okay? He goes back a long way with my mom, Sylvia, uh, being involved with politics. But this is disgusting. In 2009, Lockheed Martin gets hacked by China, taking the F-35. In 2012, a division of United Technologies gets hacked by China, okay? Taking many things, the T-700 engine, the Blackhawk, what have you. In 2015, Lockheed Martin goes to purchase Sikorsky aircraft. And by the way, Lockheed also sits on ANSI's board, right over by the FAA, right over by the FBI, all the rest of those places, DOD. And this was in the Connecticut Mirror. It states that with China's okay, Lockheed Martin closes in on the purchase of Sikorsky aircraft. But what is the worst thing is, is it says, but Connecticut lawmakers praise Lockheed Martin for clearing its last regulatory hurdle. What does that mean? Read down below. It should have said this. Connecticut lawmakers, Rosa DeLauro, Richard Blumenthal, Chris Murphy, and Jim Himes, praise our number one military contractor, Lockheed Martin, for working with communist China. You can't make this up. You also have Boeing sitting there on ANSI's board. There's a lot to Boeing. It's down below in the description. You have the FAA. Now, in 2009, I've told you on many videos, in 2009, the FAA made Boeing a regulator. That means that how does one regulator watch over another? They can't. Every one of the CEOs, from Jim McCurvey to Dennis Mullenberg to, to David Calhoun, are administrators because Boeing was a regulator. That means they have FAA authority. And rather than grabbing it, rather than these guys, these CEOs grabbing it, embracing it, going down on the floor, getting out of Chicago, going to Boeing, getting on the floor with the people, and rather than the golf course, 
They took the FAA regulatory authority and cut corners, as we see presently. Who sits there, too? The Department of Defense, who under the administration of President Obama, uh, 2012-13, they signed a waiver so that China could manufacture specialized magnets for the F-35. And most recently, a senator came up and says, oh, Chinese parts are going into the F-35. No shit, Sherlock. By the way, that was a quality statement. You also have the Federal Trade Commission. I'm going to leave it here. But I find it very disappointing that the committee that I got up and as you can see, you can see the expression on my face because I know poor Sam Salipar, he was basically giving his inquisition in front of CCP, China, because Bo Boeing, I mean, wow, that means the Department of Homeland Security still is a member on ANSI and they sit on the IF right over by communist China. So they haven't gotten out of the infiltration business. And they also sit by Iran and Pakistan, remember? You don't remember 9-11? That's the worst thing too. So you have, you have Richard Blumenthal who praised Lockheed Martin for working, not just Richard, you have Rosa DeLauro, Jim Himes, Christopher Murphy, all praising communist China. Hold a sec. Wake up for God's sake, man, wake up. My telephone number is 203-556-1493 or Daryl, TQRS at yahoo.com. And I do this because of integrity, honesty, and the truth. When I stood up there in Washington holding those two pieces of paper like Moses, <laughs> all I was thinking while I was telling them the situation that Boeing let supplier auditing that they should do to two to pieces of paper, here's your piece of paper, Send it in to us. We approve it because it's ANSI ANAB accredited, American National Crediting Board. Send it in to us. Send us your parts. And just, we can relax now and give these guys behind me uh, a bonus. That's disgusting quality. And as I see that they may be picking the same crap over and over again, perpetuating it. Sam Salipur is right. There will be a disaster. If not now, when? With these types of technologies, you don't know, but everything is pointing into the direction of failure. I thank you, and I am very sorry about this video. Attention, Senator Blumenthal. Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee is tainted, and quality expert Daryl Guberman proves and explains. And I went up there, and I thought I was in Beijing. I'll talk to you soon.